Hi, I'm David Lopez with Greenlee Communications Technical Support, and today we're going to talk about the 501 Tracker. This is the 501 Tracker carrying case. Let's open up and see what's inside. First thing that's inside is a 501 Tracker instruction manual. With new units, there will also be a bag of batteries for both the receiver and the transmitter. This is the 501 Tracker receiver. There will be a 9 volt battery in the bag for this unit. This is the 501T transmitter. There will be 8 AA batteries in that bag for this unit. The CS1 test lead, the IC1 inductive clamp, the GS1 ground stake, and also embedded in the nose of the carrying case is an inductive coil that is accessed by these leads. Some of the features and benefits of the 501 Tracker. First, it is a very economically priced product, lower in cost than most other locators offered by competitors. Second, it's very simple. It's not combined with any other locating type of equipment. It is just strictly a buried line locator. That is its prime purpose. Also, it's very simple to use. Connect to the cable using the transmitter, take the receiver, turn it on, listen for the signal, look for a response on the meter, and you're tracking the cable. There are three ways to connect to a cable with the 501 tracker. The first method is by direct connection. First, put the CS1 test lead into the 501T transmitter. As in the case with this coax cable, you would take one alligator clip and connect it to the center conductor, take the other alligator clip and connect it to the shield. If it is a single conductor device, such as this electrical wire, you would connect one lead to the wire, connect the other lead to the GS1 ground stake, insert the GS1 ground stake into the ground, two to three feet away from where the cable is buried in the ground. A second method of connection, of inducing signal onto the cable, is using the IC1 inductive clamp. You take the CS1 test leads, connect them to these metal posts here on the clamp, then whatever cable you're locating, you Put the clamp around that cable, making sure that the end of the clamp touches and signal travels around the outer circle of the clamp and then induces onto the cable. A third method of connection actually doesn't involve direct connection, but actually inducing the signal onto the cable. You utilize the inductive coil that's located in the carrying case. You take the test leads that are located inside, connected to the inductive coil. Plug them into the 501T transmitter. Turn the transmitter on. Place it back in the case. Close it up. And depending upon the depth of the, the cable, if the cable is fairly shallow in the ground, you're going to take the case, place it on the ground, approximately over where you believe the cable is located in the ground. If it's deeper in the ground, you can turn the case vertically and place it this way over the cable. We're now going to demonstrate how to connect to a cable and also track a cable by using the IC1 inductive coupler. First we'll connect the CS1 test lead to the transmitter. Take the alligator clips end and connect it to the IC1 coupler on these posts. We're going to turn the transmitter on and set it at 5 and now connect the IC1 coupler around the cable that we want to trace. Open the clamp up, put it around the cable, make sure the ends are touching. We're now ready to locate the cable. Again, the initial process for tracking the cable. First, we're going to turn the receiver on and place the gain knob at approximately 12 o'clock. We will radius an area approximately 10 feet from where the transmitter has connected to the cable. And we will both listen for tone and look at the meter on the receiver. Once you've detected the initial location of the cable, move the wand back and forth to detect the peak, and then continue moving forward. 